Be with us in our discussions and guide our hearts and our decisions. Help us do what is right and just. May our vision be for the best interest of all. Amen. Amen. Okay. She's my favorite granddaughter, and she's going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I will call for the Fayetteville Cumberland Youth Council members. If you would step forward, please, introduce yourself, and let us know what school you go to. Okay. You go. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to get in trouble for this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, wife, yeah. wife Donna, wife Donna, <laughs> son Justin, uh, favorite daughter-in-law in Fayetteville, uh, Megan. <laughs> Hello, all. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Faith Bullard. I am a senior at Cross Creek Early College High School, and I am the membership chair of the Federal Cumberland Youth Council. And my name is Akira White, and I am a senior at Reed Ross Classical High School, and I am a member of Federal Cumberland Youth Council. We are excited to join you all this evening and provide a report on what FCYC has participated in in the last few months. Last Monday, FCYC held our annual senior night where we recognized achievements of the FCYC members from the class of 2023. This group included valedictorians, student athletes, and full ride scholarship recipients. It was an amazing opportunity to recognize the hard works of our senior, seniors and the amazing things that they have accomplished throughout the four years in high school. Seniors were presented with various awards and given their FCYC cores in which they will wear as they cross the stage at graduation in the upcoming weeks. We are so excited for the bright futures ahead of the FCYC seniors. As 2022 to the 2023 year comes to a close, FCYC is looking back at all we accomplished this year, looking towards the future. Our committee leads have created committee reports for the year to reflect on the previous projects we have completed this year, such as Kindness Matters, our Jingle Tree and Adopt a Team Christmas Drive, and many more. We have also are creating new ideas for the future projects to continue to create change in our community and surrounding areas. As we take time to reflect, Please accept our heartfelt gratitude for your continued support, and we hope to make all of you proud. Thank you for your continuous support of the Federal Cumberland Youth Council, and we thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you so much, Commissioner Adams. No. Well, like I said, two. I already had my pictures there. Uh, <laughs> Y'all come on around. But I will tell you that uh, it is about celebrating people, and uh, uh, FC. Uh, YC does an excellent job. And so we have a certificate of appreciation uh, presented by uh, the Board of Commissioners for outstanding service as a voice for youth in the Cumberland County community and for focusing on the betterment and promotion of our community from the Cumberland County Board of Commissioners dated this 15th day of May, 2023, signed by the chairman, Dr. Tony Stewart. And you know, I just try to keep my commissioners uh, out of trouble. Y'all come on up here, the family, and get a picture right up in this well. Uh, come on, come on, uh-uh, come on. Everybody, come, come on. on, come on. Well, come here. I'll take come one on. with you. Come on, nobody else will. Come on down here, Mr. Boots. Come on down here. I can't get you to the... I'm getting trouble today. I'm a, I'm you'll be at home, and you'll be in all kind of trouble. I'm a oh, y'all sit down, not y'all yet. Oh, 
his family. Oh, okay. I'm part of his family. Come on down. Wait a minute. Come on down. Come on down to him. Make him tell you which part. Proud. <laughs> <laughs> Don't move yet. Now the commission is stand up. Okay, let me get y'all off. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right. You <laughs> fan One, two, three. There you go. There you go. Because this is my other one. My other one is the home. You want a um, box? So far. At this time, now we're going to take a moment and recognize the Cake Fair Soapbox Derby awardees, and Commissioner Glenn Adams will do that presentation. All right, good evening. Uh, this, this brings me uh, great joy to do this. I'll tell you, uh, most people, uh, I should have brought a video, uh, haven't seen the Soapbox Derby because it has not been in Cumberland County in 50 years. Uh, so that just tell you how old I am, right? Because I, I remember the Soapbox Derby. So let me tell you my little story. Is when I was a kid, the Soapbox Derby was big. It ran down Gillespie Street, uh, and everybody in favor would go out to the Soapbox Derby. It was on TV. You had to build your own Soapbox Derby back then in those days. So I was in my backyard trying to build this Soapbox Derby. And the reason I'm a lawyer today is because I wasn't an engineer. Where my engineer at? Because <laughs> I could not get that wheel to turn. I couldn't go downhill, uphill, but it, it still uh, was in my heart with the Soapbox Derby. And so I was at one of the chamber events, and I saw Warren Hahn, and he says, I'm bringing back the Soapbox Derby. And I said, what? say what? And so we got together to talk about bringing back the Soapbox Derby here to Cumberland County. First time this year, in 50 years, the Soapbox Derby was here. And so uh, that, uh, it happened in April. 23rd, the Kiwanis Club of the Cape Fear hosted the annual Soapbox Derby at the Crown Coliseum. Thank uh, commissioners and, and the staff for allowing us to do it out there at the Crown. Thank you to the Kiwanis Club of the Cape Fear and the Soapbox Derby race director Warren Hahn for hosting this event, and I'm going to let him have a word or two. But uh, let me tell you, you remember Owen Spears? Yeah. Okay, the year I wanted to run, Owen Spears won the race. And his car was actually out there in April, uh, and he came out, and uh, he, I think he might have been next to the last winner. There was one other one that he came out that won. So if I can get Jackson Stillman and Aiden Stillman to come up here, they competed in the uh, Soapbox Derby, and they are a Gold Star family. Uh, Mom's here. Stand up, Mom. We gonna, you can let everybody see. And uh, come on up here. So, by winning, and, and let me tell you how big this can be for us in the economic realm, is that this soapbox that we have here in Cumberland County is for all of Eastern North Carolina. So, uh, when we had the competition, when they had the competition the other day, it wasn't just Cumberland County. We had Lake Waccamaw. We had somebody from Goldsboro. We had somebody from Moore County. And so, as this grows and we come back to the soapbox derby, we're going to make this uh, an economic engine. So, uh, before we get started with these... Everybody that was there for the soapbox there because it was a lot of work out there. I was just sitting there drinking water, so I had nothing to do. But they had to take the cars down. They brought the cars back up. They had to put out hay. They had to do all this. If y'all, you all stand uh, because of what you all did for these kids, bringing the soapbox derby back here, the Kiwanis Club, the volunteers. Thank you all so very much. They even let Pit Dickey be out there. And I don't know about that one. But anyway. Great. The logo on the shirt's great. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, sorry. We took care of this thing. But um, uh, Jackson and Aiden. Jackson won for the stock ages 7 to 3, and Aiden won for the ages of 9 to 18. And they will compete in the All American World Championships in July. So I think that uh, gives a round of applause for these young men. Warren, if you want to come and say a word or two about the Soapbox Derby, and while you're doing that, I'll hand that. Right. 
Yeah, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk. Uh, this was actually a dream that started about five years ago with my Kiwanis Club. Uh, and we basically said we want to do something as a fundraiser, F-U-N raiser, not an F-U-N-D raiser. So um, a couple of us went over to a, a event in Kentucky, and it was run by a Kiwanis Club. And we said, hey, we got to bring this to Fayetteville. Once we started researching it, we found that uh, it had been 50 years since the last Soapbox Derby uh, held here in Fayetteville. And just one little thing I would like to say is in 1971, the Soapbox Derby here in Fayetteville, for the first time, uh, a 10-year-old girl wanted to enter. So she built a car. She went to uh, submit the car for entry in the Soapbox Derby headquarters said, no, you can't race because this is only for boys. So her family got, obviously, lawyers <laughs> involved. And so the soapbox derby settled. But their defense was, there's no way a girl can get into a soapbox derby in a ladylike manner. That didn't fly. So anyway, the first race of a soapbox derby with females in it was right here in Fayetteville in 1971. So uh, the Qantas Club got together. Kiwanis Club of Cape Fear, there's two Kiwanis Clubs. Our club we actually got together and said, we're gonna make this happen. And uh, it took about three years, we're here, we're gonna do it every year. It's gonna be in coordination with the Dogwood Festival. So thank you all for coming, and these guys are great. All right, all right. thank you, Warren, thank you sure. all so very Please. much. Please. And thank uh, the Kiwanis again, thank you for bringing the Soapbox Derby back to uh, Cumberland County, North Carolina. It's just a great day. Commissioner Faircloth. Madam Chair, I'd like to say one thing about it. That uh, soapbox derby that they had in 1973 was run by the Fable JCs. Yes. I was on that committee, and uh, my, my job was to go scrounge up as many hamburgers as I could for 100 kids, and it was, uh, it was all free, a free meal for, for all those young people, and, and the JCs got it all donated, and that was... 50 years ago, and it was, it was wonderful then. I'm sure it was, it's wonderful now, and I appreciate what the Kiwanis Club has done. Okay. Thank you. At this time, um, I want us, if you all, you all don't have to stay for our meeting. <laughs> stay as not, long as you want to. Not but. that it's not exciting, but <laughs> thank you for coming out. Yeah, that's what I said. That's you want your babies to go? Oh, okay. okay. Look at that, she'd like to see me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> move out the way, move over one. Move over one. <laughs> no, you move over the chair one. She can't see what you standing there all the way. There you go. <laughs> she looks much better than you anyway, so <laughs> let's get this thing working right here now. There we go. No, don't be looking over there. <laughs> at, this, at this time, I want to take a moment um, just to thank um, Cumberland County residents for the food drive that was done on this past Saturday. Um, special thanks, thanks to our clerk and deputy clerk, um, Andrea Tebby and Iva Clark and the Clark family as well. They came out and they volunteered. And so it was a great, great um, show. And we did this um, food drive because the kids were getting ready to get out of school soon. And we want to make sure that our schools that have food pantries um, are in good shape when the kids come through before they um, before the last day of school. So thank you so much for what you all did for volunteering your time on a Saturday. And so I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and at this time, uh, we will call on County Manager Greer to read the public comment policy, please. The public comment policy is as follows. The public comment period shall last no longer than 15 minutes. Time may be extended at the discretion of the board. Each speaker will have a maximum of three minutes to make remarks until the 15 minute limit is attained. No time may be yielded by the speaker to another speaker. Speakers will be acknowledged by the board in the order in which their names appear on the sign up sheet. Speakers will address the board and begin their remarks by st stating their name and address. Public comment is not intended to require the board to answer any impromptu questions. Speakers will not discuss matters regarding the candidacy of any person seeking public office. Speakers will not be courteous in their language and presentation. Personal attacks will not be tolerated. And written comments or supporting documents may be left 
with the clerk to the board. Thank you. Let me also recognize that we do have Commissioner Jones with us. Um, okay, Commissioner, I'm sorry. Madam Clerk. We have one speaker, Mr. Matt Jones. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Back to no, I know y'all don't want 15 minutes. We don't want 15 minutes. We're good. I do like these Bibles that are here. All right. 887 Flintwood Road, Fayetteville. So I know from looking at the agenda, y'all have things totally not what I'm here about. I mean, what I'm here about is, you know, we have a homeless issue. We have a mental illness issue. Cumberland County, Fayetteville, whatever we want to call it. Fayetteville's got it where everybody is illegal. Y'all have got it where everybody's illegal. So I've got nothing to say, but God's always got me. So he's got a few things to say. So what we're going to look at here is, let's see. Oh, you know what? Let's look at this one. We'll start with this one. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for me, or for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. That's, it's so simple because... You guys have literally made it illegal with your attorney. You've made it illegal for these people to exist within our county. Do we see that as an issue? Because we have nowhere for them to go. They are illegal inside our county. So we don't want them as residents anymore. It's just, it just boils my blood because I pay these taxes. And I, I appreciate what you just did with these little boys that were in here and, and that whatever that thing is, but you know what, that's not that important. That's, and the big thing, that's not really that important. We were put on earth to grow the kingdom of God. You're not going to do that by making it illegal because they don't have a home. Someone hung themselves because they were made illegal. Not because of y'all, they were within city limits. I don't put that on them, but I'm calling on you guys. You are the top of our county. I'm calling on you to call on God to fix our county, our city, fix this. Because you, we, we shook hands, Commissioner Adams, you said, Holy Spirit go, you know, goes everywhere with me. You know, I know a ghost. If you don't exercise a muscle, you lose it. If we don't exercise the Holy Spirit, we're going to lose it. We're losing it all around our country. We're losing it all around our state. We're losing it all around our county. We're losing it all around our city. All I'm saying is call on God. If you, you don't have to change your mind, you just have to be open to the idea of a change of heart. Let him work on it. If we're men and women of God, let him work on it. He will put the main thing, the main thing. I don't care about boxcar racing. I care about people. I care about people. We were given this world to run, to take control. Why, why are we making it illegal for our people to exist when we got nowhere for them to go? We're sending them to other counties because we don't have anywhere for them to go. Please, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you. At this time, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Manager Greer, are there any... Oh, approval of the agenda. Oh, where am I at? Oh, are we crossed it out? Right. Okay, I'm sorry. Approval of the agenda. Um, Manager Greer, do we have any changes to the agenda? Yes, Madam Chairwoman. We have one change to the agenda. We'll have to have a closed session to speak to uh, about the acquisition of real property pursuant to NCGS 143-318. Thank you. If I can get a motion. Motion to approve the agenda, including the closed session item. Second. It's been moved to properly second. All those in favor? Commissioner Jones, unanimous. Thank you. At this time, I will move on to the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Manager Greer, are there any Second. changes to the consent agenda? No, there are not any changes. If I can get a motion. Motion to approve. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. We will now move on to our public hearings. Uh, the public, the policy for public hearing arguments may be made by the proponents and opponents shall be limited to a maximum of 10 minutes for each side. If there's no group representative, each speaker shall be allotted the maximum of three minutes until the 10 minute time limit is attained. 
Rebuttals will only be permitted at the discretion of the chairwoman with a maximum of one three-minute presentation by each side. We have two, present, two rezoning cases. Um, Rawls Howard, our planning and inspections director, will present each zoning case and answer any questions you may have. Good evening, Commissioners. Good evening. First item that we have on the agenda this evening under rezoning is case ZON 23-008. So As you can see by the highlighted star, this case is located in between Fayetteville and Eastover, just off of Business 95. <clears throat> The applicant owner is the Fulcher Real Estate LLC, with the agent being Brian Fulcher. The request is to go from A1 Agriculture to MP Planned Industrial. Uh, the intent is for a storage yard or to expand an existing storage yard operation, which you'll see in the um, in, in the slides coming up here. Uh, so the acreage is about 13, we're well, just a little over 13 acres. You can see by the highlighted tract here, it sits uh, just behind some other MP properties, but this is the, let's see if I can get the, mouse here. This is River Road that you can see. This is the Middle Fork Road that comes in or like the Loop Road that comes in onto I-95 sitting just outside of the Fayetteville city limits for those of you that are familiar with the geography of the area. Uh, as you can see, um, pretty much around the property is, as I said before, there's an existing storage yard that you can see that kind of fronts up onto the Loop Road here, but you can see there's Cumberland Tractor here, Carolina Power, and pretty much it's vacant land with a couple of homes just sitting just to the north. This is just an eyeball of just the zoning that's out there currently right now. You can see the majority, I should say, of the tracks around there are non-residential, primarily industrial, sitting at the hard corner itself. But you can see the Fayetteville city limit lines sitting pretty much right here in the highlighted neon green. Uh, there is water and sewer to this property, uh, so, but there are some hydric soils that you can see that are present pretty much all throughout the property, but with the provision of utilities that would make that move for any kind of septic or well use. Uh, when we look at the Eastover plan, which is what this is subject to, it is split between commercial and industrial. Staff largely thought that this was compliant with the plan, so, but as you go through, if the board decides to approve it, we did put the motion uh, type of language in there that would correct the map if there was an approval to get rid of the commercial and put industrial for the whole piece of property. So we just thought it was largely commercial, or it was largely compliant based off of what you see on the map. This is the subject property looking into the site. Uh, as you can see, there's like a flag lot, flag pole that sits just to the uh, adjacent of this property that sits right at the tip of this arrow. So we're sitting right here at the sort of the driveway of the flagpole portion that goes back into this tract here. <clears throat> This is standing on the property just on the other side of that little flagpole portion, but there is an existing structure that's sitting on the property as you can see currently right now, but it's all that land that you see pretty much behind there. This is looking back toward the road with the structure immediately on the um, left-hand side. And this is actually standing on the property looking at the applicant's uh, existing storage yard that you see currently right now. And this is the west view, again, looking up that flagpole portion of the adjacent property with this site immediately on the right-hand side. So staff had recommended approval of the request, and when this went to the planning board at their last meeting, they supported that request by a 7-0 to zero vote. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to elaborate it the best I can. Any questions? No, we will open up the public hearing. There are no speakers. We will close the public hearing. I'll take it. I'm sorry. Commissioner Keith. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in the case of zoning 23-0008, I move to approve the rezoning request from A1 Agricultural District to MP Planned Industrial District and find the request is and find the request is not consistent with the Eastover land use plan, which calls for commercial at this location. However, the board feels that approval is in the amendment to be adopted, current Eastover area land use plan, and the Board of Commissioners should not require an additional request or application for amendment to said map for this request. The request would make the commercial designation in two of the applicants' three parcels consistent with the industrial land use assigned to the same property owner's adjacent parcels. The request is reasonable in the public interest as the requested district would be compatible to and in harmony with the surrounding land use activities and zoning. Second. Second. 
It's Somebody. been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Where's Manny? I'm making sure I don't do some push a button here that's going to. I'll just try to put this up. Oh, the, there we go. All right. Uh, the second case that we're here. Uh, that we're going to be hearing this evening is case ZON 23-009. As you can see by the highlighted star, this sits in the northeastern part of the county between uh, the town of Wade and Godwin up along uh, Dunn Road area. The applicant owner is Ka uh, K Catherine Herburn. Uh, the agent is Christopher Lockamy Sr. The request is to go from A1 Agricultural to R40A Residential. The intent is to add a second mobile home to the property. The current property sits on just on, on pretty much about two acres of land currently. Uh, as you can see by the subject site, the um, area that's around this piece of property, you can see this is the Sisk Culberth Road where it sits, if you can read the map up here. I just give you a little bit of bearing. This is Dunn Road, as I said before. This is where the fork of Dunn Road and Sis Colbert meet out, out toward that area. Uh, the, this, all of the types of land uses out here, as you can see, are primary farming. You do have some um, homes and some um, manufactured homes as well. Sorry. So as you can see by the zoning map, the predominant types of zoning that you have out here is A1. You do have existing R40A, which sits down here at Old Bluff Church Road and Sis Culberth here, uh, and there's, there is some existence of RR out there, and the RR district does allow a minimum of 20,000 square foot lot sizes. Uh, there, is no, uh, there is a water line out here, but there is no sewer. Uh, there is a presence slightly of some hydric soil sitting on the back, but for the most part, the site is uh, deemed to be, at least with our uh, data, to uh, be good for well and septic. <coughs> this area is in the Wade study area land use plan which calls for farmland so some of the associated districts that you can see here are A1, A1A, R40 and R40A so the request is consistent with the adopted land use plan. This is standing at the subject site you can see this is the driveway to the property. This is sitting on Sis Colbert Road looking southward you can see the uh, sign that we have placed out here uh, per the state statute requirements for public notification with these site immediately on the left hand side. This is standing on the site looking across the street uh, you can see pretty much as farmland. This is looking north again with the site on the right hand side again primarily a lot of open large lot and agricultural properties. So staff had recommended approval of the request. When we took this to the planning board, they also supported that request by a seven to zero vote. So I'll try to elaborate any questions if you have any. Are there any questions? What was in the water this night? What was on the what? <laughs> what, was, it, what was in the water that this night that you heard these? Um, unanimous, unanimous, yes, unanimous. Yes, yes, sorry, yes, <laughs> Commissioner Adams. I'm sorry. Um, open up, uh, we're now open up public comment. Public comment. Hearing. Are there any speakers? <laughs> there are no speakers. We will close the public hearing. Commissioner Adams. In case it's on in 23. Oh. Keep it the button. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go right ahead. I forgot to push my. Uh, push, it, well, push the buttons. Go ahead. <laughs> in case zero in 23-0009, I move to approve the rezoning request from A1 Agricultural District to. R40A residential district and find the request is consistent with the wage study area land use plan for which calls for farmland at this location. <coughs> the request is reasonable and in the public interest as it is compatible to and in harmony with the surrounding land use activities and zoning. Is there a second? Second the motion. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. We'll now thank move you, on to thank you. We'll now move on to items of business. Manager Greer, if you would introduce the item and the staff to present it. Okay. Uh, the first item for a consideration of the submission of the program year 2023 community development action plan. Uh, this will be presented by D. Taylor, uh, community development director. We have to submit this every year in order to receive the CDBG and home program funds. Early in this month, we did the uh, public hearing for this. So this is just the final stage. 
Thank you. Good, uh, good evening, Ms. Taylor. Good evening. So at the April 17th Board of Commissioners um, meeting, community development staff Devin Newton and uh, Rashanya Manuel presented the program year 2023 annual action plan. And this is the document which outlines the anticipated funding resources as well as the project types that we plan to undertake in the upcoming uh, program year. So at that time, staff did ask the board to hold a public hearing at which time uh, there were no comments. Um, in addition, community development staff did distribute uh, the draft copy of the plan uh, throughout several locations to include uh, the town halls um, and also um, posted it on the um, community development website. And this was for a period of 30 days. And we did not receive any uh, comments, but keep in mind though, uh, even outside of that 30 day period, uh, throughout the year we still receive um, inquiries and comments from, from the citizens. Um, in addition to uh, distributing the annual action plan, we did publish a notice in the local newspaper as well, informing citizens of the public hearing as well as the public review comment period. Now we know that um, there is a great need of affordable housing. Of course, we're having challenges um, when it comes to the development. Um, so staff has been in consultation with uh, potential community partners, um, as well as exploring uh, innovative ways to uh, develop affordable housing and um, ensure that it remains affordable to the beneficiaries and in, in accordance to applicable federal um, laws. So that has not changed. So again, here uh, today, I am asking the board to uh, approve the submission of the plan uh, to HUD. Uh, following the um, approval of the submission to HUD, HUD will review the plan. Uh, once they approve the plan, they will s send our uh, funding agreements uh, so that we can be begin undertaking activities. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? Discussion? Move we approve the submission of the program year 2023 community development annual action plan. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Thank you. Manager right. Greer, the next item. Uh, item 4B is a consideration of designating a voting delegate to the 2023 NACO annual conference to be held July 21st through 20, July 24th in Travis, Texas. Travis County, Texas. Sorry. Thank you, Commissioner Adams. No, Commissioner Council. <laughs> Commissioner Council. <laughs> you get uh, it. I, I, I noted in the notes, I can't find it right now, they didn't ask for but one. I suggest that we go ahead with the two. Uh, in the case it's necessary that we use the chairwoman as the uh, voting, voting delegate. delegate voting delegate and if necessary for any reason if you happen to fall off a chair or something that's just for you Mr. Adams. Okay. <laughs> second. Second. <laughs> second. It's been moved and properly second. I'm all those in favor. Unanimous. <laughs> okay. Um, manager Greer. Uh, Item 4C is the consideration of the conceptual design for the Crown Event Center. Brian Haney, um, Assistant County Manager, will present this item. Good evening, Madam Chairwoman and Commissioners. Good evening. Uh, earlier tonight, you voted to approve a recommended building program and revised project budget for the new Crown Event Center. Early tonight. Is that on what you said? Uh, on consent. On consent. It's been through the board a few times. And I was taking one of my pictures. <laughs> Uh, uh, alongside those items, uh, Project Architect Ewan Cole has been working on a conceptual design for this facility, and I'm bringing that recommendation before you tonight for your consideration. The project delivery team has looked at the site to determine opportunities and constraints, both on the site and in relation to neighboring properties, and has used that information to develop a recommended concept design. 
I do want to share that the conceptual design you are about to see includes the .31 acre property located at 115 East Russell Street, currently occupied by the Yarborough Winners and Neville Law Firm. The county acquired this property earlier today and its acquisition will allow for enhanced efficiencies related to the design and operation of the new Crown Events Center. As you can see, the recommended concept includes a front lobby that faces Gillespie Street and the historic courthouse, which the architect determined to be the most appropriate location for the face of this facility. The first floor also includes other public facing spaces such as an additional meeting rooms, and you can also see the position of the main event hall. The second floor will include VIP level seating and other VIP spaces for this facility that will enhance revenue generation. The third floor includes additional balcony seating for the main event hall. This slide includes a number of visual representations of what the new facility might look like based on the recommended conceptual design. The first and third images are aerial views, the first from the corner of Gillespie Street and Otis F. Jones Parkway, and the third looking back from Russell and Dick Streets. The central image is a ground level view from Gillespie and Otis F. Jones, from which you can see a glass front lobby and patrons enjoying a roof terrace overlooking downtown. Tonight we are seeking consideration of this recommended concept from the board to allow the project delivery team to continue moving forward with the design process. And I'm available for any questions you have. Are there any questions? Is there a motion? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Motion to approve. Second. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank, thank you. you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Haynes. Now I will call on Vice Chairman Adams for the nominations and appointments. Uh, this is for the nominations for the uh, Joint Fort Bragg and Cumberland County Food Policy Council has three vacancies. Uh, uh, the recommendation came from the Food Council as to the co-chair and the military chair from Fort Bragg, Katina Foxworth, uh, and members who work in the field of health care, public health, food insecurities, food access, access, or child and adult care, Shannon Gettings and Kenneth Bailey. That's all the nominations, Madam Chair. Thank you. Move on to appointments, Vice Chairman Adams. That will take us to the appointments, the first one being the Fayetteville Cumberland County Park and Recreation Advisory Board. There are six nominees and there are two vacancies, so everybody will get two votes. Um, uh, for those names, I will let uh, Madam Clerk call those out. Um, the first would be Antonio Red Guerrero. That was uh, an, uh, uh, a nomination by after the Fayetteville Cumberland County Parks and Rec. Right. Stephen Harper, which was also a nomination by the Fayetteville Cumberland County Parks and Rec. And uh, Sabrina uh, Spiegelman. Justin Smith. Uh, Trayvon McNeil. I've got a question. Yes. Yes. I thought you, I'm sorry, I didn't vote because I thought you were going to say oh. all the people that were listed and then we were going to Oh, well, I can go back if there, if, um, okay. uh, as to who I you I just want to know, before I started voting, I wanted to know everyone that was in the list and then I thought we were going to Oh, vote. I'm sorry, that was sent to you, that's why, I, I'm sorry. Uh, so you got the list, so I can go back. And anybody want to vote for Antonio Renteria? Anyone want to vote for Stephen Harper? Anyone want to vote for Sabrina Stickelman? Anybody want to vote for? Oh, did you raise your hand? She did. Mm -hmm. For yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, and for Justin Smith. Trayvon McNeil. Well, we already voted for her. We just Wait, added her. How many times did we vote? Okay. And Helen Stovall Brackett. No. Two times. Just two times. You just get to vote two. You all got mine for Trayvon and the other lady, correct? Right. So it should be Trayvon and Helen Stovall Brackett yes, as the. Uh, each. Right. 
Okay, so those would be uh, the appointments to that. The next one is the Fulford Cumberland County Economic Development Corporations. There are three nominees for one vacant position. Everybody gets one vote. I'll call the names out first and then come back to vote. Uh, Joshua Choi, Chris Bostic, and Ferdinand, Ferdinand Azaria. Uh, so all of those voting for Joshua Choi. Chris Bostic. And friend of the friend of Nan Azaria. And so that will look Joshua Choi would have. Yes. That will take us to uh, the Southeastern Economic Development Commission. There is one nominee for the vacant position on the Southeastern Development Commission. Uh, I'd move to appoint the county manager Clarence Grid. There's second. second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor? Unanimous. You've been scared, huh? Thank you. Thank you. At this time, if I could get a motion to go into closed session. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to close session pursuant to 143.318. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Purpose. And that is for real estate, real estate, real estate acquisition. Okay, yeah, real estate acquisition. Real estate acquisition. Oh, I, I can get a motion to come out of closed session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? If I can get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Oh, yeah. All those in favor? <laughs>